The good news according to St. John, the eighth chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Then Jesus said to the Jews who had believed in him, If you continue in my word, you are truly my disciple, and you will know the truth, and the truth will make you free. They answered him, We are descendants of Abraham and have never been slaves to anyone. What do you mean by saying you will be made free? Jesus answered them, Very truly I tell you, everyone who commits sin is a slave to sin. The slave does not have a permanent place in the household. The son has a place there forever. So if the son makes you free, you will be free indeed. The good news of the Lord. Last week we talked about being truthful in a lying world. In living out that message, I want to say that the the message today is strongly influenced by a sermon from a number of years ago by Pastor Christian Chong. Just wanted to be honest out there. Don't want you to say I'm plagiarizing or anything here. You know. <laughs> today, I want to take a moment to look at our psalm for the day, and for a moment with your prayers, I want to talk about being secure in an unsafe world being secure in an unsafe world. No story for you today, but I do have some warning signs to show you. You know, you see them all over the place. They'll warn you about immediate dangers, like this one that says, danger, slippery surface. They'll warn you about potential dangers, like these from one of my favorite places, Hawaii, that warn of the potentials for falling rocks and flash floods. Because of lawsuits, some places that serve coffee have to warn you, caution, beverages are extremely hot. Please make sure lid is secure and do not hold over or between lap. I'm still not sure, yes, I'm still not sure how you can hold something between your lap, (laughs) but don't do it with a hot beverage. Some people think do not touch is a suggestion, so signs have to be explicit like this one. (laughs) Danger, do not touch. Not only will this kill you, it will hurt the whole time you're dying. Some have to state the obvious, like this one at a pool. Thanks. If you hadn't warned me, I would have tried it. Some realize that people don't really read signs unless you get their attention. Caution. This sign has sharp edges. Do not touch the edge of this sign. Then really small at the bottom. Also, the bridge is out ahead. With others, you just kind of wonder, really? That's a real sign put up by some government. (laughs) While with others, you just wonder what they really mean. Does this mean dancing deer ahead? If so, I want to see it, and I actually may want to dance with the deer, you know? It could be kind of fun. These signs remind us that we live in an unsafe world. Our news media reminds us of that every day as they tell us of new things that we eat or do that could possibly kill us. Uh, Plus the headline stories about wrong way drivers on the road, serial killers in Gary, Islamic extremists in the Middle East, and of course, Ebola in the US. For the record, Twice as many people have been married to Larry King as there have been people on the streets with Ebola in the U.S. Just think about that for a moment. 9-11 shocked many people, not because of how many people died, but because it shattered the sense of safety that folks had. I'm not going to sugarcoat it. We live in an unsafe world. It's no wonder that people are constantly, constantly looking for ways to be secure living in an unsafe world. 
It's nothing new, though. The psalmist, probably David, so I'm going to call it David, uh, call him David, tells us through his own experience, God is our refuge and strength, a very, very present help in trouble. Uh, that's where we can find true security and peace. I, I love this psalm because David reminds us that our security is in God, not in this world. It's a simple thing, but one that we miss. David tells us that we are to look to the creator, not the creation. We are to love the giver, not the gifts. There are towering trees, beautiful mountains, splendid oceans, animals, birds, and plants. But when it comes down to it, this world has little to offer us. The earth can give away, the mountains can fall into the seas, and the waters can roar and foam as the mountains quake. We've got to turn to God because God alone can be our refuge and strength. God is our ever-present help. God is our hope and nothing else. We have only one source of security, and it's not the FDIC or the U.S. military. It's God. When the stock market drops and terrorism rises, when, when natural disasters destroy our homes and corrupt politicians destroy our state, when Ebola and high school shootings threaten us, when our health fails and friends betray us, faith in God is the only place we can find security. Our world, with all its advancements and the scientific miracles that exist, isn't any safer today than it was thousands of years ago. Sadly, we feel more unsafe today than, than those days when people lived in villages and in wooden huts. In this day and age, we are not guaranteed safety. All right, let me share this one with you. Uh, according to, to several preachers, and I couldn't find any actual stuff except from preachers about this, but so I'm, uh, yeah, that's what I'm going to say. It's according to preachers, and preachers would never make up a story for a sermon now. Uh, <laughs> About 35 years ago, an older couple who were about to retire became alarmed at the threat of a nuclear war. They wanted to find the location that would give them the best chance of survival in the event of an atomic catastrophe. Eventually, they did find such a place. That Christmas, they sent their ex-pastors and friends a card from their new home. They had found their ark of absolute security in some island off the coast of Argentina in the South Atlantic. When people got the card, nobody had any idea where those islands were. Less than a year later, everybody knew when Argentina and Great Britain, who both claimed to own those, those islands, were engaged in a war. The war was there, and everybody then knew about the Falkland Islands. Anything can happen at any second. We need to have disaster, anti-terrorism, and now Ebola drills, because we are at the whim of circumstances. But there is no guarantee, there is no security, unless we place ourselves in the hands of the one who holds eternity, who is in control of all things. Martin Luther reminded the church that we need to turn to God more so in these last days. Only when we seek God can we find rest for our soul. David wrote, be still and know I am God. The psalmist also said, some trust in chariots and some in horses, but we trust in the name of the Lord our God. They are brought to their knees and fall, but we rise up and stand firm. God is waiting to hear us call to the creator of all for help. And if we call, God will respond. I think that's important to hear because too often when Christians feel insecure, they stop coming to church. When you are secure in God, you don't need the security of other things. God is still in control and seated firmly on the throne. That's why we can say God is our refuge and strength and ever-present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth give way and the mountains fall into the heart of the sea. Our security is in God and not in this world. David also reminds us that our security comes from our faith, not 
from our circumstances. David was facing all kinds of problems when he wrote this psalm. Most likely he was being attacked on all sides by Saul or some other king and had found a place of relative safely. Uh, But the psalmist was was able to feel secure and happy despite the turmoil around him. He says in verse 5, God is within the city and she will not fall. And in verse 7, the Lord Almighty is with us. David's faith is in the presence of God, and that gives him hope and security. Not because the city has huge walls or strong gates, not because he has the best trained military with incredible weapons, not because they've established security checkpoints to keep out all the terrorists and killer diseases, but because God is with them. To me, people, I just need to say this, to me, people pray for the wrong thing. Good life, good car, good job, more money, husband, wife. Uh, no, no, no doubt God can bless us materially with riches, and I'm sure God wants us to enjoy the good gifts we receive just as we want our children to, to enjoy what we give them. But God doesn't want us to, to depend on the created. God wants us to depend on the Creator, Our trust is not in things, but in God. Uh, What we need to pray for is strong faith. And pray that in the midst of a changing world, we'll continue to trust that God is with us. God's presence should be our peace and joy. We, We want to have faith in God no matter what happens. Jesus said, Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. I I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your heart be troubled, and do not let them be afraid. We know that there are folks who live with great prosperity. They have lots of money and possessions, but they are consumed with worry and fear. On the flip side, there are those in our world today who live in very difficult and dangerous places but have a great sense of security because they have placed their faith and hope in God. Job lost everything around him, but he chose to place his trust in God. Job was shaken, but he didn't fall. The 125th Psalm says, Those who trust in the Lord are like Mount Zion, which cannot be shaken, but endures forever. Security isn't the absence of trouble, but the confidence and courage we have in the midst of trouble. And that confidence and courage comes from faith in God. It's this faith that gives David the courage to say, We will not fear. We need to have the same courage today. Jesus said, I've told you all this so that trusting me, you will be unshakable and assured deeply at peace. In this godless world, you will continue to experience difficulties, but take heart, I've conquered the world. Our confidence can't be shaken because we have a God who is in complete control. We have courage, not because we are strong, but because our God is strong. God is powerful and rules over all. God hasn't changed, and God's love will see us through. We are secure in an unsafe world because of our faith and our circumstances, knowing that the one who loves us is with us. Finally, David reminds us that our security is in eternity and not in the present. Come and see the works of the Lord. In other words, ultimately, God wins. I have to remind you that this world isn't our home. If you're looking at just your present circumstances, you will be shaken. You will tremble. But if your life is grounded in eternity, you can stand firm. As Christians, our lives have an eternal dimension. We, we have to remember that, that nothing that happens here can harm or change the things that matter most. Our relationship with God through Jesus and our promised home in heaven. Nothing can change those things. No one can take them away. The articulate African apostle Paul said that every detail in our lives of love for God is worked into something good. God works in every situation of our lives to bring about divine good. God doesn't cause them, but God does use them. 
the Ebola plague in West Africa isn't the will of God, despite what's being said on some of, of the lamestream station. Uh, God didn't send the disease to punish the people of West Africa, but God will use it for God's eternal purpose. The high school shooting that happened in Washington State this week wasn't the will of God. The teen who did, did it went against God's will. God had nothing to do with it, but God will use these things for God's eternal purposes. Our confidence doesn't go up and down with this week's roller coaster stock market. Our security isn't in how good the news is on television. God says through the psalmist, be still and know that I am God. I am exalted among the nations. I am exalted in the earth. There is evil in the world. The devil is active, but God also is in the world. The creator's heart is for the created. Jesus tells us that God will still judge the evil in this world, and ultimately good will triumph over evil. Truth will be victorious over the lie, and love will win out over hate. Thanks to Jesus, we know the end of the story. God wins in this world. There are no guarantees for any of us. We're not immune to the harms of this world. But hallelujah, we are loved. We have a father who watches over his children, and that is our security. The, the song says, this world is not our home. We're just passing through. Our treasures are laid up somewhere beyond the blue. Sisters and brothers, despite all the dangers around us, we can still feel secure in this unsafe world. Uh, we can feel secure because we know our security is in God, not in this world. We can feel secure because we know our security comes from our faith, not from our circumstances. And we can feel secure because we know our security is in eternity and not in the presence. God is good all the time. And God will lead us safely back to our eternal home. No matter where our journey takes us, God takes our hand and walks beside us. That's good news, and that's great security. Amen.